To that end, I think it's worth taking a moment to consider something else. As a Secretary of State, I've had the incredible privilege to see what happens when Indonesia leads. From our work together in ASEAN, the G20, the Security Council, I know that Indonesia has an incredible reach and potential as a force for good in the region and indeed throughout the entire world. And today I want to urge you, I want you to urge the same, same actions I asked the Catholic Church's leaders to do in the Vatican. We need more religious leaders to speak out on behalf of people of all faiths wherever their rights are being violated. We need more religious leaders to be a moral witness. We need more religious leaders to support principles of humanity and justice as your founders wrote and as our respect for unalienable rights demands. The Burmese military's violent oppression of Rohingya and other minorities is one area where Indonesia has pushed ASEAN to live up to the humanitarian ideals, but where progress on justice remains stalled. Likewise, today the Iranian regime's persecution of Baha'is, Christians, Sunni Muslims, and other minority groups has failed to galvanize a proper denunciation from that country's diplomatic partners or the religious leaders in many Muslim-majority countries. But in fact, the gravest threat to, future, to the future of religious freedom is the Chinese Communist Party's war against the people of all faiths, Muslims, Buddhists, Christians, and Falun Gong practitioners alike. The atheist Chinese Communist Party has tried to convince the world that its brutalization of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang is necessary as a part of its counterterrorism efforts or poverty alleviation, depending on which audience that they are speaking to. But you know, you know, we know, we know that there is no counterterrorism justification for, for forcing Uyghur Muslims to eat pork during Ramadan or destroying a Muslim cemetery. There's no poverty alleviation justification for forced sterilizations or taking children away from their parents to be re-educated re in state-run boarding schools. I know, I know that the Chinese Communist Party has tried to convince Indonesians to look away, to look away from the torments your fellow Muslims are suffering. I know that these same CCP officials have spun fantastic tales of happy Uyghurs eager to discard their ethnic, religious, and cultural identities to become more modern and enjoy the benefits of CCP-led development. When you, when you hear these arguments, I just ask you to do this. Search your hearts, look at the facts, listen to the tales of the survivors and of their families. Think about what you know of how authoritarian governments treat those who resist its rule. There are now dozens, maybe hundreds, of credible academic and research reports documenting what is taking place in Xinjiang personally had the chance to hear the stories of that immense human suffering firsthand when I met in Kazakhstan with relatives of ethnic Kazakhs that had been held in camps in western China. Their, their, tear, their tears filled my heart, first with anger and then with resolve. That meeting underscored to me how precious God-given freedoms are and the responsibility that each of us has to defend them. And indeed, my faith teaches me the same thing. It teaches me that human beings have a basic dignity because they're made in God's image. And that as people of faith, we have an obligation to honor that truth by protecting the weak and comforting the afflicted. My holy book teaches me that faith without works is dead. It teaches me that of those to whom much is given, much is expected. I'm sure you know the ways that the Islamic tradition and the Indonesian tradition demand that we speak out and work for justice. Look, uh, I know you'll do that. I'm excited to have a very robust discussion with the General Secretary on all of these ideas, so I'll stop here. But I want to remind you that democracies all have very different cultural heritage. But in spite of that, we have a tremendous amount in common. All of our countries have struggled with crises, with injustice and threats both internal and external, but we continue working towards that more perfect union. We all do this because our people have the same yearning for God-given unalienable rights as people everywhere do. Free people of free nations, 
must defend those rights. It is our duty. Even as we each do this, and as we do this in our own and often different ways, we should recognize that we have strength in numbers. We should recognize that we can turn to each other for support in difficult times and that our cherished rights and values are absolutely worth defending at every moment as the birthright of every people. Many leaders of your organizations have nobly helped Indonesia do that for decades and earned a respected place in Indonesia's democratic pantheon. I hope that everyone here today will add to this legacy in the days and months and years to come. May God bless you and God bless your democracy and God bless Indonesia and the United States of America as well. Thank you.